So today's a little bit of a different video since it's not about the farm aspect of things, but it's about hunting. We are getting ready for deer season. So if you watched all of my turkey hunting videos, then you know I'm an avid hunter. I'm an avid conservationist and outdoors woman. And deer season is my favorite season. So we have to go check all of our deer stands. We have to go put out trail cameras. We have to go scheme as to what food plots we're putting in. And then we're going to put out corn and minerals at those trail cameras so that we can get some good pictures. So let's go in TSC and get some corn and all that good stuff. And then we'll head to the farm. So we'll probably get some trophy rocks. We'll get some corn, corn's back there. There's a few cameras that will for sure to load it up because we know from years previous that that's where the big boys are. I kind of want to try some new stuff that we haven't done because okay. did you well, get- They absolutely love that cotton candy. We'll get it, put it on here. Let's try it. We're going full send. Okay. Trophy rocks are bread and butter. You just can't go wrong with them. And if they have any more like the granulated trophy rocks, we're gonna get them too. I don't know where my husband went. So there you are. All right, let's see how much these bags are compared to the other ones. Well, it's 15 bucks for 50 pounds or 12 for 40. Oh. So whichever. Which one do you think? I mean, I'm the deer corn? I'm, I'm fine with this. I know this has been washed better. But I don't do any of the heavy lifting. They don't, they don't have any good batteries. We can do cheap batteries and then just change them every week. I think we're to run to Academy because we need a few more things. And I don't really want to start doing everything and have to re-do all the batteries real quickly. And this is definitely episode yeah, one of many doing this here. this year. What? Can we just unload these right here? You heard me. I tried to help. I'm not to. We're gonna create one or two mineral sites. <laughs> we're a little behind the eight ball this year, honestly. We're typically we have a lot more mineral sites. The camera's out already. Is what it is. We're getting there. Planning day, like for sure, putting out trail cameras. But as far as like stands and food plots, big planning day. Buck bourbon. Yeah, that, that stuff's actually fire. You wanna try some? Oh, I know it works. We don't have to try it. <laughs> well, do you wanna get some? We can, yeah. Okay. It smells awesome. Put it in like our best spots? Yeah. Get two of them. All right, I wanna look for a feeder. All right. We gotta find some feeders. I mean, I know they have them. I saw them, baby. You did see them? Yeah, they're all in boxes though. They really just have this one, I guess. A 30 gallon and a 50 gallon. Would you put it in a different spot? Maybe up on the hill where no one can get to it? There's already a feeder up there. Well, there's though. already a feeder there. I want to put one maybe inside the alfalfa field. That way we'd have one in the back, up on the hill, and in the- Middle. In the middle. That okay. way we kind And of I mean, the, the cows don't go in the alfalfa field, so we wouldn't even have to worry about- Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, roping it off. All right, well, let's get one. See, that one's automatic. I, I think I just want gravity, gravity fed. fed. I like watching you pick up big things. <laughs> I can't see where I'm going now. I said Jonathan. <gasps> Oh, okay. She, she kill a fox. Okay, you want you want her to kill a fox. Yeah. Winnie Winnie needs. Does Winnie need a bear or a raccoon? Cause you gotta get them both something, or they get upset. Fox. That's so funny. Does it squeak? All right, we'll get that one. Real tree. Cart returned. Okay. So we're gonna do 
So this place that's down the road, we only have permission to turkey hunt on and then we cut it for hay and whatnot. And so there's no reason for us to have cameras here after turkey season because we can't deer hunt it. So we're coming to grab a few of our cameras and take them back to the farm, my parents' place to hunt. Tied it too good and locked myself out. I would love to come up here and clear all this out and do a kill plot up here because that one year we did it, I got a bunch of does up here with my bow. Mm -hmm. And then last year there was just nothing up here because we didn't put the time in. So I think this definitely needs needs our attention this year. It's okay. such a good spot because I mean. That's where you killed your first archery deer ever. Mm -hmm. uh, my first archery deer ever, we weren't. So there's our stand right now, but at the time we had that stand moved to this tree that's right here in the middle. And she was right over here in the woods at like, the, no, 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 she was over here in the woods at like 30 yards and she ran across. But last year, it's such a good spot up here because A, it's a good spot to come to hunt and you can just see so well, far. You want, the, you want the good news or the bad news? <laughs> How about just the bad news? I got the wrong battery for it. But it's a six volt, it should work. That stinks. Down here in this other spot that we, we do, we usually plant like this whole hill going downward. So like we have the in the trees, we usually do like something that's shade, like that'll grow in the shade and whatnot. And then in that field, we do a mixture of things and we usually line the rim of it with like turnips and really like sugary stuff. Um, but even when you're down there in the winter, cause there's no leaves, you can really see well up in, up in here. So it's just a really cool spot. Like either whether you're sitting down there or sitting up here, you just have so much visibility. Like most of the time when I'm in that stand, I, like I've only ever gotten archery deer up here with my compound, like with a compound. It's always been within like, other than that first deer, it's always been within like 16 yards. Like they come right here. So it's a good spot. Putting too much weight in the back of this. <laughs> I don't think it's made for this much weight including myself. Again, today is not the end all be all of what we're doing for deer season prep. This is, this is day one. This is like just doing the bare minimum and scheming. So there will be more episodes. Rooster, you're looking mighty furry but you are pretty fat. I like that weight you put on. What the heck? Not spreading nothing. All right, this isn't gonna work, Katie. Okay. So you want me to just tip it over and then pour all this out and spread it? <laughs> Whoops. Oh no, it's right outside. <laughs> yeah, we'll spread it around. Good for the season right there. Brief intermission, we just found out our nephew was born. So we're running to the hospital right now. This will uh, pick back up on Monday. So it'll be two seconds for y'all, but two days for us, so. It's Monday now, it's been a couple days. We went and met our new nephew. We are now Aunt Katie and Uncle Jonathan. So it's kind of like a rainy-ish day today. It's windy. They are working here on the patio. So we're hoping to finish the patio video today, but Jonathan is home. So we're gonna go finish up those cameras that we were gonna do on Saturday. So we've got a couple cameras to go put out, go look at some food plots, look at a couple stands. So let's get to it. So we don't really hunt up here very much, but we like to see what comes. We like to see what comes from this neighboring property across yeah. this fence. I wonder why this camera quit working. You wanna see what happened? <laughs> I mean, they smashed it. That's why in the cow areas, I try to put them up higher. There's no way it works, but we'll just keep it all together. Wouldn't that be a miracle if it worked? But now it doesn't. I mean, I can just throw a bag of corn here and I can put this one up. Why don't we put a little corn out and there's no cows here, so they're not gonna get it and stuff. So we can put some good stuff out 
and just see what happens. In years past, we haven't hunted here that much, but I would think this might actually be a really cool spot since we're filming a lot this year and if we're needing yeah. to do like a quick hunt because you know if you get in too late in the afternoon sometimes you're not wanting to like traipse through the farm you know when there's a lot of deer movement going on so this yeah. could be a good spot to like this is a sneak really in. really easy spot to slip into so that might be really cool this year i mean we haven't hunted here a lot well they use this all the time we just don't ever really hunt it yeah the big part is i don't really like the stand that's here well, we can change that. Yeah, we can change that. Gonna see how they like some of this trophy rock. Are you gonna put corn here too, or just? Yeah, I'm gonna put. It? I'm gonna put corn. Okay. Now the good thing is, is right here, no cows are coming in, so we don't risk them eating our goods. So we use five point cell cameras. So I think that was was the micro link and then we used the flexes as well. And so this, we just checked it to make sure it was taking pictures and it got a nice right. picture of Jonathan working and me standing around and Nate filming out of the side by side. So, <laughs> so I'm, cre I'm very anxious to see what ends yeah, up popping I'm gonna, up. I'm gonna get that one in full HD. <laughs> proof that you're the only one that works around here. Yeah. So last year, we were looking for these deer. And that was him last year. I don't, I, I assume three or four years old, probably three. And then same with this one, that we got them. We have groups of bucks that live on different parts of the farm that, you know, we know that these are always gonna be over there. I actually saw them two days ago over there. And then there's other bucks that come from the neighbor's farm and we see them in certain spots. So this one, he, I don't know if he's gonna be old enough this year. He looks like he had decent mass, but you know how he's like kind of funky? So that could have been A, from an injury or from funky genetics because we do have some funky genetics. Um, I killed a really funky velvet deer a couple years ago. But if he's wider and more mature and bigger and at least four years old looking this year, he might be a contender for the one I chased during velvet season. So we had this trail camera out for turkeys and we don't really deer hunt up here in this area as much. So we're gonna take it and put it in a new spot. Cows literally destroy everything. I will say, I'm not gonna complain about having land and cows. I'm not gonna complain one bit, but when you're trying to both cattle farm and hunt the same property, it does prove to be kind of difficult in some situations. I tell you what, that was that was some of the coolest. We filmed the deer coming in. I was sitting in that stand and within 30 yards, so 30 yards from that stand is like you know, 10 yards into these woods probably. And we had had a little food plot in here as well. And so we'll need to do that again. Yeah, I might have um, to redo it. Come up, you wanna come up here with like your Harley rake and? Well, I need to come up here with a bunch of dirt and put like, five, six inches of dirt right Definitely here. need to do another food plot in here. Yeah, because um, it was the money spot. But. We had nine bucks within nine 30. Nine bucks within 30 yards. Like multiple of them were within like 20 yards. Son of Sam, the one that I'm hunting this year, because this was two years ago, he was a three and a half year old. He was standing for forever. We have so much footage of him like broadside, just asking for it. He was like, like my stands right there and he was standing broadside grazing like right here for forever. And I was just sitting there, I'm just like, are you, are you serious? And he wasn't the buck we were after that year and he was a little too young. And so I watched the funky buck cross the fence over here and then he just stayed all far away while all the younger bucks were in here. And he wasn't that old. He was a three and a half year old deer. He just had inferior genetics. So we were hunting him and he came all the way around and then all the way through here and I shot him when he was this was all a lot more cleared out. And he was around like right here, I believe. And then went that way. But that was a really cool hunt. I'm excited to hunt here again, possibly. We'll see, that's the thing. That's why we're doing these trail cameras is to see where we're gonna hunt when velvet season comes and when early bow season comes because it changes year to year. I mean, one year a spot could be hot and awesome and the next year it could be dead, so.
Jonathan has this buck that he's seen since it was one and a half. And Jonathan doesn't hunt bucks on this farm that much. And so he said, I'm gonna hunt this deer. I'm gonna wait till he's five and a half and he's four and a half this year. He said, I'm gonna wait till he's five and a half. This specific deer is mine. And I was like, okay, cool. And so he's really excited to see what he looks like this year as a four and a half year old. He, he named him Dante. I don't know. I'll show you pictures of him. Saw him as a one and a half year old in 2020. He walked right up on me. I was actually taking a climber to a certain spot and he walked up on me like seven, eight yards away. And so we got a ton of pictures of him. It was like, man, I've always wanted to kill a big heart shaped rack, eight point that is just super tall. So that was him as a two and a half year old. Him as a three and a half year old. That was in July though of last year. I got tons of pictures of this deer. You see he's main maintaining the same shape. And so he'll be four this year and we'll hunt him next year. So hopefully, hopefully he's still alive. I hadn't seen him this year yet, but I got high hopes. We dug a pond two years ago and we have tons of good dirt. That's like, I don't know, 300 yards from here. So I need to spend a day running skid steer loads up here. And I, I, I need to thin out the canopy. I came in here and cut down, I don't know, 15, 16 trees and then ripped the stumps out a couple years ago. And that was the year that it paid off and Katie killed her funky buck right here. But this is just such a great transition area. We got an alfalfa field, a pretty big one, just down at the top of this hill. And what these bucks do is love to come from the neighbor's property that is split in the fence right here. And it's real thick cedars, like nasty hollow right here where a lot of bucks over the years, they travel right through here. So we're like, we're gonna catch them on the way to the field. And it's a great spot where we can slip in from around the pond. They're kind of landlocked right here with the pond. So we come up the hill and walk in, and in order to access the alfalfa field, they walk right through here. Yeah, this is a sweet. This, this is a great spot. And yeah. there's, there's a persimmon tree right here. There's a bunch of persimmon trees. Remember last year, this thing had wasps all in it? Oh, it, I'm, I'm sure it does. Oh, good, there's another cell cam. So in case there are wasps, I will be staying in here for until he figures oh, out Oh, 100% are, wasps. Because I'm allergic. What's happening? I was getting that hat ready. Mm. I was waiting for it to just erupt. Oh no, the top just went down the hill. I've seen a few come out. Oh yeah, there's wasps all around. No, thank you. What sucks is I took the lid off the feeder. I saw it go flying. And it rolled all the way down the hill. Oh, and now the rain has begun. Poor Jonathan. <laughs> Poor man. Are the wasps mad now? Oh, they're mad. We took away their safety. They didn't send me any pins to hold the hold the legs in. Mm. Whoa. I think that'll work. work. I've never used one of these gravity feeders. We've always used the automatic ones or a little different kind like homemade 55 gallon drums or something but that's the first one I ever bought. See how it works. I like how you can adjust how much corn comes out but I feel like they're gonna fly through that because it's too accessible. You know the thought process is so many coons and squirrels and all kinds of other animals besides deer, especially turkeys, eat all the corn we buy. I add to this mineral site. So this has been alfalfa for two or three years, and it's been the money spot on the farm. The biggest, biggest deer Katie's ever killed came out of this field. But 
Technically, it was outside of the field, but I was in the field. Yeah, he was coming in. Katie, you may have to get out and help me. Okay. I got it. Oh, you got them arms? Yeah, but it's too, uh, too wide. I forgot about this tree. Got them long arms. I don't know where we all these thistles came from. It's one thing I can't stand is thistles. That was literally our wedding flower. Uh, point proven. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I. You literally, your boutonniere had a thistle on it. I just spent so much time as a kid cutting thistles. A little ingenuity here. There. Yeah, I kind of like the speed that that comes out. We'll see. I think we're good. I think we finished right before the rain. Well, we got cut short due to the storm, but we got quite a bit done today. Quite a few cameras out. I look forward to seeing what pictures we get of the bucks that we've seen prior years, if any new bucks come up. Um, this is just the first day of trying to really get a hold of deer season prep and we still have to do food plots. We still have to put up new deer stands. We still have to go fix old deer stands and clear shooting lanes. There's so much to do. So if you have any questions about deer hunting, listen to that thunder. That's crazy. If you have any questions about deer hunting, if you, I'm so open to them answering them. I know a lot of people that follow me don't hunt. And so if you don't like it, I encourage you not to watch my hunting videos. But if you are intrigued, I would love to answer your questions. And if you could subscribe and like before you leave, that helps me out so much. And let me know what kind of videos you would like to see going forward about hunting. Thanks for watching.